Ambenick is back with another handheld. Anyone kept can how many so far this year? Let's check out the RJ40XXV and see if it deserves a place in your hands. The Ambenick RJ40XXV is available in three colours, white, transparent black and indigo blue. It measures around 5.4 by 3.6 by 0.86 inches and weighs 216 grams. There's a great looking small bezel 4 inch IPS screen with a 640 by 480 resolution. The picture quality is very impressive as you will see when we get some games up and running. On the front we have a D-pad and gaming buttons along with a menu button. There's a single analog stick surrounded by RGB lighting. You can customise this in the settings to change the lighting mode, brightness and speed, or switch it off if it's not your thing. On the left side are volume buttons and the first of two micro SD card slots. On the right side are the power button, reset button and the second micro SD card slot. On the top is a mini HDMI port for outputting to a TV or monitor. The bottom has a USB-C port for charging and there's a 3.5mm audio jack. And last but not least, the back has four buttons to act as shoulder and trigger buttons. They are comfortable to rest your fingers on, acting as grips of sorts whilst not in use. The Ambenic RG40XXV features the well-used H700 quad-core processor running up to 1.5GHz. It has a dual-core G31 MP2 GPU to help with the graphics processing. There's 1GB of LPDDR4 RAM and for storage we have the 64GB card for the OS and the 128GB card for games. For communications there's Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2. It is powered by a 3200 mAh rechargeable battery, which will last up to the usual 6 or so hours depending on usage. We see the now familiar Linux based front end that Ambenic have been using in their handles this year. There have been improvements over this time which is great to see. You have two menus for native Linux based emulators and the other for RetroArch. There are systems ranging from Atari 2600 up to PS1 and PSP. Performance and compatibility can vary so one emulator may be better than the other. Generally the RetroArch emulator cores work great and have easier to use features such as save states, fast forward and screenshots. All the 8 and 16 bit systems should run fine without any issues at all. Everything up to the PS1 era works great. You will notice with N64 and Dreamcast that performance can be hit or miss depending on the game. You will need to use frame skipping to get more demanding games playable. PSP is also supported, but again, performance is mixed. The low demanding games will be playable, medium maybe with some frame skipping, but you can forget about higher demanding games like God of War, even with frame skipping. There are the excellent MinUI and Nully custom firmwares available if you want to squeeze some extra performance out of the RG. As well as improving performance, you also get a nice looking front end and a wealth of options and features. Nully should be back available soon once some bugs are fixed. The Ambenic RG40XXV is overall a decent handheld. The 4 inch display really does look great and for me it's just the right size for retro gaming. Personally I think it could do without the analog stick, it's really only required for the later supported systems which have mixed success in terms of performance. While the stock firmware has improved over the past months we do need to look again at custom firmwares to get the best out of these handhelds. But for price versus a good quality handheld with a larger 4 inch display, it is great value for money. If you are in the market for a vertical handheld, then look no further. You can learn more and order the Ambenic RG40XXV from us at droix.co.uk and droix.net for worldwide shipping. Did you like the video? Why not subscribe and keep up to date with our latest reviews and content? Thanks for watching and we will see you back in the next one.